Welcome back to Pro Paper Plays. Today we are continuing my summer adventure, Memories of Another Life. So in the last episode, we got a horrible ending. And we're just going to try and see what choices can we make differently with Koto Noha. Hopefully, we can get a better ending. Anyway, here it is. Okay, so there's clearly something else we got to do here. <laughs> I'm not in this part yet. I need to figure out what it is. Listen, Koto Noha. I'm going to figure this out somehow, okay? You'll see. All right, what do we get? What do we got when I click back on her? So you ended up in someone else's body. Wait, how do I skip? Oh, hold on, hold on, control. Okay, let's try this first choice. Let's um probe carefully. For a moment, I considered how that might look. Hey, Koto Noa Chan. Yes. So, um, I have this grandpa. Okay, this will be good. Who knows an older lady? Who knows a different older lady that lives five blocks away? That elderly lady had, wait, said that their neighbor, lovely and kind woman, told her once over a walk to the grocery shop. That her son from a technical uni university in that town said, yeah, it's like, bro, what are you, what are you yapping about? <laughs> I'm thrilled to hear about your vast network of personal connections to your good, but I would appreciate if you did not belabor your point into the night. Perhaps I chase and stop wasting my time. I right, spent half an hour coming up with the half cover story. Did you send me this photo? Yeah, that's bad. Oh, well. Okay, so the band's social media page. What if we read um, the novel instead? Let's try that. Oh, I see your man of culture. You started reading Yuko Mishima's books. After giving me some thought, I decided to read that book after all. Kotonoa might not be in the mood to talk about her band. And if that happens, discussing literature could be a good move. <laughs> Search for Yukio Mishima books online. There were a number of sites in the search results. Some of the links were already viewed. Don't tell me this guy also read the interview and went straight to the books after. <laughs> okay, would not surprise me. My suspicions were confirmed. I clicked on the link to the online bookshop and found myself already logged into an account with a full bibliography of Ikomishima and the purchase history. This guy was head over heels for Kotonoha. Good thing. Saves me the trouble. I don't want to pirate these books, true. You know, so maybe they actually enforce IP laws here. I think they do, actually. Like in Asian countries, they, um, they take their internet stuff very seriously. <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, I downloaded the most popular book from the collection, closed the blind, and started reading. I had to figure out why Kotonoa liked this author so much. It's a similar reason. <laughs> As um, the band and the songs. I woke up three hours later. The sun had already dipped uh, beneath the horizon. Before I knew it, night fell. The only source of light in the room was my laptop screen. I found Yuko Mishima's novel open on page five. It's like it was smiling at me. Oh, in <laughs> the novel. That's it? Five pages. So it needs more stamina. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> I'm over back at it. I gotta turn the light on in the room. Couldn't allow the laptop uh, the privilege of being the only light source. When I got back to my computer, I already had another idea. I closed the novel and entered another search request. Uh, Yukio Mishima Books Overview. <laughs> Some 30 minutes later, I was fairly knowledgeable about that man's creative output. But crucially, looking into the author's biography gave me another perspective on his novel. It's like someone took the protective cover off and I could touch... Mishima's raw fears and insecurities. I guess that's why they always cover authors' biographies and literature class before they give a reading assignment. Mishima was hyper-focused on death. He was a little touched in the head. He's quoted as saying, I want to kill someone, but it's illegal, so I do it in my books. Okay, bro. <laughs> Murderer in the making already. Correct! Um, at the same time, despite his odd ideas, he was an interesting and creative individual. He used to be skinny, but then he got ripped. His life <laughs> wait, culminated in a ritual of suicide. Harakiri, that he performed because of his worldview. His novels were wild. He wrote about sex, insecurities, and doubts about his sanity. And that made me think of Kotonoha. Everything lines up perfectly. Of course she would like Mishima. She probably sees him as a kindred soul. She even called her albums Death and Sex. I hope that did not add up to Shut! that word. <laughs> Please no. Why would Kotonoha be into the stuff, I wonder? Mishima grew up during World War II. Americans rained down bombs on Tokyo. He saw death every day. He could die every day. What's Kotonoha's excuse? She grew up in peaceful times. No bombs in the air. Well, not in Japan anyway. Uh, was was it some sort of trauma she experienced? Or she also a little touched in the head? <laughs> I have no idea. I may never know the truth, but no matter how much I theorize. Unless she tells me, I, but I wouldn't count on that. Uh, she did tell me that that is, you know, that. <laughs> I realize that she may be upset. Nande? 
Did I let Koto know, huh? Or was it me? Was I the one unable to separate basically friends with benefits and a real relationship? Maybe I'm curious what fur is influencing me. Ah, screw it all. I shook my head. I'm tired of thinking about all that. What am I thinking, really? I haven't fully processed my last relationship at that point. But am I ready to jump into a new one? I had to cut it out. Yeah, that's... It's just that. <laughs> eh, well, Dakota know what it is. <laughs> Why would it be anything different to me? Having cemented that thought in my head, I decided I should move on to something else. My impulse first told me to get out of that tiny room. <laughs> Got my stuff and went for a walk. Yeah, we're already on another, like, story. Arc. Or path, if you will. <laughs> the weather outside was great for walks. No longer felt like the heat was going to melt down all of mankind. <laughs> for a couple of minutes, I stood outside enjoying the cool air. Where do I want to go? Usually I would just walk forward and let my feet take me somewhere. I do like exploring the alleys of the city. But it was quite late and I didn't want to wander to a bad part of town in the middle of the night through. Ooh, maybe there's a city park or a public garden nearby. Got on my phone to check the map. The closest public park was a couple kilometers away. Well, could be worse. I considered my options for a while and eventually started walking towards the park. Japan is different in the evening. There are more people outside. City lights turn on. I feel like I was walking through some kind of festival. Later on, I learned it was an occasion of sorts. The end of workday festival. I'm not being sarcastic here, actually. The Japanese put in very long hours, so the evening is their first opportunity to relax throughout the entire day. As long as they still have the energy and the means. The service industry crops up around those societal needs. When the sun comes down, every shop owner worth his salt turns on a bright neon sign, puts his employees outside to invite customers in. It's weird how that works, really. The city pool of skyscrapers rely on old advertisement methods, flyers, and street wait, street criers. I don't know about you, but I feel a serious dissonance there. Hold these conflicted feelings. Red, mild shock. Uh, I made it to the park. There I found some normalcy. Just peace and quiet. Just what I needed after walking through the festive city. I wish I could just lay down on the grass and do some stargazing. How many years has it been since I did something like that? 10? 20? Have I ever done something like that? Maybe now's not the time to begin. I know all too well what happens then. When I'm alone, distant and in different stars, I think back to what happened. What happened to me? How did I get here? Memories of Kotonoha. Oh man. It's disquieting, realizing just how much your emotions impact your life. You sleep with a girl, a brush and arrogant one too, and that's it. You're done. She's in your head. Is my love life really that pathetic? <laughs> thought does not stir anything in me. Completely banal. Huh? I wouldn't even call it routine. It was no revelation. It did not make my heart beat any faster. I must have accepted in my heart before I knew it. Common sense tells me that there are few people who are happily in love. It can't be any more than 10 or 15% of us. Even naturally beautiful people are often lonely, despite getting a lot of attention from the opposite, sometimes not just the opposite, um, gender. Take Kotonoha. She has it all. She's beautiful, smart, and popular. What does that get her? Not much, evidently. She hangs out with the chubby guy, Akira. <laughs> I guess she's not exactly spoiled for choice. At the end of the day, we both want to live a happier life, me and Kotonoha. She's more than... Wait, she's more so than I, perhaps. Just as I arrived to my life is pain conclusion, I heard a weird noise. It was some sort of odd whimpering. That's strange. Who could be whimpering so late at night in the park? Maybe who is not the right question. I'm more interested in why. Oh, here we go. Wait, I think... Are we going to see Kotonoha? Committed to chasing down the source, I took a look around. Then I froze up. Not 15 paces away, I saw Kotonoha. Oh, wait, there she is. All right, I'm going to save real quick then. Because we're getting somewhere. Oh my god. She was crying. Wait, you can hear it. Um, In retrospect, I understand I was not supposed to hear that. Not out of some ethical concern, no. Just plain psych- Wait, just plain uh, physics should not have allowed it. The girl was too far away. I don't know how the sound could travel from there all the way to my ears. Random gust of wind must have carried it. Silent and imperceptible, Katonoa's suffering was carried to me. It changed the course of the story. Maybe it changed my whole life. For some reason, the sight was burnt into my memory. Night streetlights illuminating grass and benches around spots. And Kotonoha in a strange outfit with her face buried in her hands. I rushed to her. What else could I have done in a situation like that? She was almost my girlfriend. Although I suppose the term partner would be more appropriate. But the important thing was she was in a bad place. I had to help her. 
or at least do my best. Curiously, I felt no fear then. I did not think about what would come afterwards at all. I just wanted to help her. There was no room in my mind for anything else. I did not uh, think about having to shoulder her burdens. I felt no anxiety about being able to carry them. Nothing held me back at all. I just approached her and said, Hey. Gotono, I showed her when she heard a familiar voice. She looked puzzled. Whoa. Okay, it's her rocker outfit. Akira-kun, what are you doing here? I'm out on a walk. What about you? I'm trying to prove... Wait, I'm trying to prove, uh... Fermat's last theorem. Oh. Can't crack it, so I broke down into tears. Oh, man. I admired her ability to regain composure so fast. Almost like she wasn't a sobbing mess moments ago. That's funny. But really, though, what's going on? Am I supposed to give you a full report now? She asked me with a challenge in her voice. And yet I couldn't take her push back at face value. I could still see tears glistening in the corner of her eyes. No, of course you don't have to. But I can see that you're feeling down, and I want to help. I can help you better. Oh, I can help you better if you tell me what's going on. Kotono, I paused briefly. She then asked, "Do you really want to help?" "Yes." "Do you feel you need to help because uh, we're basically friends with benefits?" "Now that, that gave me pause." "Maybe." "But I swear I would have approached you today if we weren't intimate before." I "Wonder if that was convincing at all." Probably not very convincing. I didn't really believe it when I said it. And yet, it seemed like this was exactly the thing Kotonoa wanted to hear. Even though I haven't exactly been kind to you before. Yeah, you're a bit of a pain to deal with. It felt good to finally get that off my chest. But the more I think about it, the more I come to realize that's just how you cope. You're going through some stuff. You haven't always been this way, right? And what do you know about how I used to be? I read an interview you gave. I see. She said, contemplatively. Then she smirked and looked up into my eyes. Were you searching for my news? <laughs> hey man, she knows. That was actually a rare occasion of me looking for her close photos. <laughs> she doesn't have to know that. Well, yeah, I was. I shrugged. You are beautiful. I can send you more if you want. <laughs> oh yeah, sauce. That was a shocking twist. What is her deal? When did we jump to this level of trust? Or is she trolling me? It's just a prank, bro. Are you serious? Yes. What's the catch? No catch. You saw me naked already. Can I do another nice thing for you? Okay, that's true. Anyway, I see. Well, arigato. Kirikun? Kotonoa stood up. Yes? Do you still want to help? Yes. I have three things I want to ask of you. Will you do what I need to do? Or what I need you to do? This had to be a test. I showed any hesitation, asked what she wanted me to do exactly. Anything but an immediate yes would end things. I had to agree right away, no questions asked. But am I ready to do it? What's that go to Noah's face? I looked into her eyes. I found the confidence I needed there. She looked at me with a kindness I had not seen before. Gone was the frigid and caustic look. Not a shred of sarcasm, just kindness and gratitude. It's the kind of look you only get when you help someone in need. Right now, Kotonoa is giving me that look, and it was the final push that won me over. Um, it gave me the strength to choose the only right answer. Yes. Remember how I said I was not afraid when I approached Kotonoa? Now that I have agreed to help her, yeah, I felt it all. <laughs> you know, it's understandable, though. Thank you, because, like, also, you might wonder, like, if you need, like, you know, when she said, um, will you do what I need you to do? I don't know, it can't make you worry, though, because it's like, like, you know, what should I expect, basically? Anyway, she smiled. I won't show a way land on Mars or over any governments. <laughs> Doubt. Here is the first thing I need you to do, Akirikun. I braced for the worst. Give me a hug. Oh, I breathe a sigh of relief and embrace Gotanoa. She seemed so fragile and gentle in my arms. I felt the primal urge to protect her. To care for her. To make sure nothing bad ever happens to her. I want to let her know everything is going to be okay from now on. Good God. What exactly happened in her life? I could have turned a boisterous and ruthless girl into the Kotonoa that stands before me. Someone who could arouse such feelings in me. The second thing I want from you, Akira-kun, Kotonoa can you, uh, continue quietly still in my arms, is a kiss. Oh, there we go. That threw me for a loop. Are you sure? Yes. How should I go about that, I thought. What kind of kiss does she want? Quick peck, or a proper one, or do you want to, like, play some tongue hockey? What the hell? So, 
I mulled over this briefly and came to the conclusion that the situation calls for something more than a quick peck. I doubt that's what Kotonoa meant anyway. I leaned in and kissed the girl. I wasn't expecting much from the kiss. The circumstances were strange, and the girl I was kissing was feeling pretty blue. But I'm feeling alright. Oh, but my body thought different. It's like I ingested poison from Kotonoa's lips. Her energy and her passion permeated throughout my body. I was aroused quickly and Kotonoa felt that. We finally pulled our lips apart, realized that her breath was heavy and her eyes had that naughty spark in them. <laughs> yeah, boy. Oh, okay, that's a different face, I think. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen her eyebrows go like that. Can you guess what is the third thing I want you to do, Akirikan? You want to play a game of chess, right? At least I think I'm funny. Not quite. She smiled. Bathed in moonlight, she was breathtakingly beautiful. Oh, what you got for me? What are we going to do? That is the question. Boom, 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 boom. Right. Spent the remaining part of the night together. As you have probably guessed, her third wish was to stay the night at my place. Exactly what I was expecting and what I was hoping for. But before I could assure her that she could absolutely do that, she told me something else. Oh, pfft. Out oh, of flashbang. I don't want to be alone today. To tell the truth, that had a chilling effect on me. I circled back to my earlier thoughts. Maybe you could tell me what happened? No. Shook her head. Are you sure? Yes. She said with a nod. Just give me company tonight, Kirikun. That will be enough. Yeah, so like, it must be something really serious and she probably needs, you know, she needs time to tell us. I know people who are like that, you know. And it reminds me of Cabin Fever, like how I was re-uploading it. Like, you know, Mallory kind of needed some time with us before she could really open it, open up and say like, this is where I came from and this is why I, I ran into you. Same thing with Kotono, like, I don't feel comfortable telling you, like, why I was crying on the bench just earlier. I feel like maybe um, I need time to think about, like, <laughs> to think things over, you know? Anyway, while I contemplated what woe could have befallen her poor little soul, Kotonoa kissed me again. <laughs> yeah, boy. She successfully derailed my pensive train of thoughts. We entered my place with our hands locked. We stopped by a combini on our way back. We had food and contraceptives. <laughs> oh, yeah. The guy behind the counter, a spindly tall fellow with a ponytail, guarded us with faint surprise. I guess he doesn't see couples like us every day. Or maybe he recognized Kotonoa. She's a celebrity after all. As Kotonoa was unlacing her high boots, I realized that our relationship status is no longer nebulous. By all imaginable accounts, we are a couple. We hug, we kiss, we have sex, we walk together while holding hands, we buy food together. I even managed to be a shoulder for her to cry on. What if this is not- wait, what is this if it's not a committed relationship? Maybe that's just my point of view. Or it could still be a one night stand, Drew. That that upsets me. I resort to self deceit to cope. One night stand? Even better. I don't know if she's cut out for committed relationships. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how much of her con uh, constant sarcasm I can take. Something on your mind, Akira Kun? Looking for a way out. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for an escape route, man. The house might catch on fire. Anyway, I sent some uncertainty in Kotonoa's question, so I tried to clear the air. No. I'm just thinking about how I'm liable to wait <laughs> to kill you sometime. <laughs> Whoa, she's stopping. Wait, I'm wasting your boo, yeah. Like, without context, that does sound more like a joke. But after we, we saw what happened, oh my god. God, that is so dark. Are you insane? Only sometimes. I shrugged. She sighed. I see. She continued unlacing her boots. See? Is that all you have to say? I snapped. She looked up bewildered. What are you saying? I said that I could kill you, and all you have to say is, I see. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, yeah. I mean, I could care. I couldn't care less if you could, or maybe she thinks we can't. <laughs> That's the neat part. What did you expect to hear? Shrieking, moaning, grasping at the heart, shouting, "No, please, a Kirikon, don't!" I could have turned into a vicious beast the moment we got here. Throwing you into my bed, tearing through your clothes, and forcing myself on you. Yeah, I hope listening related, you would scream, "No, a Kirikon!" That's a reference to what she said to us before. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Shut up, chan I'm your daddy now. <laughs> they both of our voices as I acted out the scene. My pentomi my pentomimi uh, wasn't as good as Kotonoa's, but still. The girl smiled and said, I see you remembered my little performance well. Of course I did. It's not something you can just forget, you know. I'm sorry to disappoint, but these clothes must remain intact. 
This is my stage outfit. I'll need it the night after next. Stage outfits? Yeah. I have a concert tomorrow. I dropped my jaw a little. Are you serious? You read my interview, didn't you? I should have clued into you um, that I perform on stage. Also, like, the last concert thing. Well, actually, wait, no. The last concert thing was when we listened to her music. My bad. Because, like, he's probably thinking, like, oh, she can't possibly be having any upcoming concerts. Alright, I never thought you'd have a concert so soon. Really? I thought everyone at the university knew. Well, if I spent more than two days here, I would have known. But I didn't, so I just shrugged. Indeed. I have a concert the day after tomorrow. The first and the only. Why is that? Don't bands go on tour with uh, multiple concerts? This is by design. Actually, let's talk about anything else. I'm sick and tired of thinking about the concert. Okay. I guess that was enough about that. Fortunately, another conversation topic quickly popped into my head. Do you want something to eat? Sure. Arigato. Kotono went- Wait, Kotono went on into the room and I turned to my mini kitchen to whip up some bento. I wasn't exactly cooking, I just pulled the cord on a box of pre-made stuff. <laughs> it started some kind of chemical reaction which heated up the contents. The Japanese have the best ideas, man. I work it back into my body, I'm going to start a business importing these things into Estonia. Yo, stonks. Nice. When I turned around, I found Kotonoa was not just sitting idle. She got out of her punk rock outfit. Oh, she stood in front of me in her underwear. Okay, yeah, looking. And I'm keeping that too, don't ask why. That was unexpected. Do you have something I can wear? Nani? I didn't understand what she wanted right away. What do you mean? Are you asking if I have some girls clothes around the house? <laughs> I was asking if you have a shirt or a tee I could borrow. Or maybe, yeah, you'd like me to stay like this. I mean, kind of. <laughs> you think too poorly of me. I'd rather see you walk around in your birthday suit. Yo, true. <laughs> You're so predictable, Akira Kun. I'll get that post too. Whoops, oh. And yet, I must insist on a change of clothes. We're going to eat. I wouldn't want to distract you with my naked body. <laughs> I imagine naked Kotonoa sitting across me <laughs> with a bento. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Who could think about food in a situation like that? Oh, is this uh, shirt okay? It will do. I love wrapping myself up in men's shirts. I shrugged. Knock yourself out. Hey, nice. <laughs> Way to look like a nightshirt. Kotono looked even sexier in a shirt on top of lingerie. What the hell? What is the sorcery? You know what? I changed my mind. Just take it all off. <laughs> we spare me the buffoonery here. <laughs> Let's eat. Okay. What else was there to say? Alright. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, I think I'm going to end this part here. Holy crap. Um, firstly, that, like, the ending we got earlier. <laughs> that was, uh... That was a lot to take in. But it does seem like after we read um the novels and after we went on that destined walk to the park, we um got closer to Kotonoa. So I think hopefully this means like, a better ending. Cause I'm gonna be honest, I really wish that last part wasn't the ending. Like I would have just been better off if she was like, Oh, you know, I just I don't want to be with you anymore. But I mean to be fair, we had to know the context. But still it's kinda sad how it ended. So yeah, hopefully. From here on out, we get closer to Kotonoa, and we also, like, help her with whatever she's going through, you know? Because, like, I like her a lot, okay? It's becoming one of my favorite characters very quickly. Alright, we got the save file there. But yeah. With that said, hopefully you all enjoyed this part of My Summer Adventure Memories of Another Life. Hopefully, uh, we do get closer to Kotonoa. <laughs> and hopefully, uh, things don't turn too dark again. Anyway, with that being said, in the top right corner of your screen... There's going to be an info card that will take you to the next part once it becomes available. And with that, I will see you on the next one. Peace.